Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome, this is Google Spreadsheet Formulas. So we've got a lot to cover, and hopefully um, a lot of this is going to be your questions about how to do different types of things. I've got some uh, information that I'm going to share, just a very, very brief presentation, and then we're going to dive direct directly in to look at some formulas, doing some different types of things. You can actually make a copy of the spreadsheet, have a lot of the different formulas that we're going to use to do some different types of pieces. So my name is John. I work with MCNC. I'm not sure what's in the TechFest information, but um, I work with MCNC, not DPI. I used to be at DPI, but now I work with DPI's contractor, MCNC. So uh, my email address is up there. If you run into any issues with creating Google formulas or anything like that, feel free to drop me an email. I'll be more than happy to work with you. How are you doing? Uh, work with you on any of the issues that you may have. The goo.gl that you see up on the board, that's a listing of websites that I have created that I've done that you can access being able to look at um, presentations, there's screen recordings, videos that are up on there that you can watch as well. I am recording today's session and I'll post it up on the TechFest. So if you need to go back and reference to it or anything along those lines, you can. I'll post these, the links to the spreadsheets, the video, everything like that up on the TechFest page. I haven't posted anything up there yet because, of course, recording it live and whatnot. All right, so how many of you have used Google Spreadsheets? Everybody's used it. Formulas on a scale of 1 to 5. Okay, how many of you are experts in formulas? Anybody? Somewhat? Four? Four being, you know, somewhat on the verge of an expert? Midway, three. three. Happy mediums. All right. Uh, anybody brand new to formulas? Okay, not a problem. We're going to start sort of at the low level and then go up from there with some different types of things. Um, the formulas that you can create, you can start on the low end and go all the way up very sophisticated formulas to do a lot of different types of things. So we're going to skip over this. Uh, how many of you are from Pitt County? Outside of Pitt? Where are you guys from? Bladen County. Bladen? Okay. Gaston County. And you're from Gaston. So. Um, I had somebody from Gaston in the last session, and I do a lot with Gaston on their forms and everything along those lines. So um, we may dive in, look at one of theirs. I'm not exactly sure. I've been working on some stuff with them, actually, over the weekend on some forms and spreadsheets and things along those lines. So formulas pull information from a lot of different areas mainly from your spreadsheet information spreadsheet and forms but you can use formulas to pull from a lot of other types of things in areas so um, it all integrates in together now I told you guys it was gonna be short sweet straight to the point so the document that you that I'm gonna be using you can access the goo.gl it should have been all on one line not sure why it separated it but uh, goo.gl forward slash capital N, capital B, lowercase s, capital B, three, lowercase w. With those, with that link, you'll have access as a view only mode to being able to access the document and be able to actually make a copy of it yourself so that you can have the formulas and be able to see those. Okay? So MBS. B3W. All right, so the spreadsheet that I've got, I see several of you are already in there. We're going to take a look at how you can take this data, being able to do a lot of different types of things with formulas. Now, Google Formulas starting at a low level are your way of creating or doing mathematical functions with a spreadsheet. You can also have it to do lookups, looking up data. Uh, bringing it in from multiple spreadsheets all into one location, being able to do a lot of different types of things. Now, those that create spreadsheets, you know you can create thousands of spreadsheets. 
How many of you use Microsoft Excel still? Anybody? Okay, somewhat. I don't use Microsoft Office, okay? Everything I do is on Google Docs. All of the formulas that I can use in Excel, I can use in Google Spreadsheets, plus more. Um, there's more formulas that you can do inside of a Google Spreadsheet now that you can't do inside of a Google, an Excel document. So for me, it makes sense to use a Google Spreadsheet. Now, one of the first things is how to get access to all of the Google formulas that you have access to. Um, for me, I'm zoomed in, so I've got a More button. So I click on my More, and then I've got the Functions menu. From there, we can go and see the basic functions of Sum, Average, Count, Max, and Min. Now you can go to the more functions and you get a listing of all of the Google spreadsheet functions that are out there and available to you. Anytime there's something that you want to use, you've got an idea of something that you think you could do with a spreadsheet, with a function, you could go out and get that list. Now you can filter that list to say, you know, hey, I want to be able to count something. So we can go and type in count, and it gives us all the count options for being able to do inside of our spreadsheet. There are things that in here that I have never heard of, formulas that I've never heard of, never used, whatever the case may be. All right. So one of the first things that we're going to look at is here I've just got this little document has several students listed in there. These are not actual students, it's just a fake list that I use on a regular basis to do several different types of things. But it's just got a listing of information. Now at the bottom, you'll see I have a counting tab. We'll start with counting. So if I click on that counting tab, and you guys, if you make a copy, you could go to file, make a copy to get a copy of the spreadsheet, have your own version if you want to. So counting, one of the first things that we're going to do is I could either go in here and type in all of these options that are here, or I could tell it I want to pull a unique version. Well, I see that I've got some things that I need to go fix on my class data real fast. So if I go in here and say instead of physics with a space in front of it, I just want a regular physics. And I'm going to fix this art from where I've done this previously. Math is okay. That art, I'm going to fix that one. All right. So if I go back over to my counting, we'll see that my listing is a little bit smaller. So one of the first formulas that I want to show you guys is unique. I use the unique relatively on a unique basis. Oh, come on, guys. Y'all got to wake up. Come on. I know that was bad, but, you know. All right. So, unique. Let's talk about formulas. In order to use a formula, first thing first, you got to put in an equal sign. you got to tell it that it's a formula that we're going to use. Then we got to give it a little bit of information about what we want it to do. Well, we want it to pull our unique items and then tell it where we're going to pull these unique items from. Everything after you tell it a function is going to have your parentheses. Now, here I'm just telling it class data. Class data is the sheet name. Now, anytime you're creating spreadsheets and you create multiple tabs down at the bottom, I highly suggest you to either take out the spaces or make sure you know what you're doing with the spaces. Because the more spaces you add to a name, the more, op ch more of a chance you have to fat finger, forget a space, or something along those lines. So for me, most of the time, I'll take my spaces out, and I'll just put the words together, and I'll put a capital D separate, or capital letter separating my names. That way, I'm not having to worry about spaces. Because if I put in a space here, And then I go back over to my counting. 
you'll notice that it now, instead of just being the word, now I have to have uh, quotes around it. I've got to put quotes around to be able to say, hey, make sure you pay attention that there's a space between it. So if I was that, ooh, I'm glad I had that top on there. If I don't have my quotes around it, it fusses at me telling me I have an error. So anytime you have a space in your sheet names, you need to make sure that you put the quotes around it. Now here I'm telling it I want the unique, and I want you to pull the entire E column. So it's telling it class data, exclamation point to say I'm done with the name of my file or the area of my file. I want you to pull E to E. Now if I go back over to my class data and I look at the E column, this is all of my majors. So physics, art, so on and so forth. These are all the ones that are being used. Okay. So it says, I want you to pull the entire E column. Now if I wanted to, I could go in here and say E1 to E100. It pulls the entire column. Now it's giving me a reference because I don't have that many column that uh, oh, I forgot my E there. I could tell it that, and it's going to pull all of my data down through E100. Or maybe I only want it to go to E3. Now there, I'm not going to get all of my options. It's only going to give me just the, just the first ones in, those, in that scope. Now, the initial formula that I had was E colon E. That way, anything in the entire column, I don't care where it's at in the column, just pull it in for me. By using the entire column or leaving a blank E at the end, it doesn't matter if my page gets added on to later. You're doing counting off of a Google form. you got a Google form that the data is coming into a spreadsheet. Well, after the default thousand lines and it keeps adding more lines, adding more lines, if you don't put a regular E or the ending, drop the ending number off, it's going to stop at where it was. So by leaving it with just the letter, it's going to keep going down the page doing all the other options for us. All right. Now, I'm going to go over here to my D column, and I've got the same thing. I've got my unique, and I'm telling it to pull the unique all the way down the page. Okay. So it's pulling up my class level, seniors, freshmen, sophomore, juniors. Okay. Now, for this one, I'm going to modify this a little bit. To say I want C1 to C1, that gives me my class level. Now, I'm going to copy that unique, and I'm going to paste it into D. But this time, I'm going to say C2 colon C. But I'm going to add something else at the beginning. Now, right now when I pull this, it pulls the first thing that it finds. The first one it finds is a senior, freshman, sophomore, junior. I really, I want my freshman listed first. So what I can do is I can say, okay, I want you to pull a unique instance of all of this data, but I also want you to sort it first. So I put sort out in front of it and put my closing parentheses. Now it's going to put it in the order of I got freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors. The reason that it puts it in that order is because I have the numbers out in front of them. One, two, three, four. If I didn't, it's going to put them in alphabetical order. Okay? Now, the reason I undid all of that is because I got this piece here that I got to show you guys. But if I wanted to, I could go over here to my majors, and I'm going to put sort out there in front of it. And you'll notice that art became the top, and my major went down below. You've got to be careful when you're do, doing using the sort that you don't include your headers, because they'll get overwritten. All right, here I've got some, another formula that I want to talk to you guys about. I want to count. So here for the sophomore, for E5, I've got a formula count if. So I want to count if 
something equals something. So here I've told it count if class data C to C, anywhere in that C range of my class data, I want you to count it if it matches what's in D5. So if it matches that it's a sophomore, I want you to count that. And you'll see that I have six sophomores on that sheet, on that spreadsheet of class data. It adds those up. Now, if I modify this to say D4, it then gives me that I've got 14. That's if we're using telling it to match up to some data. It counts it, it adds those up. Now I could also type in what I want it to be. But again, make sure you put quotes around it if it has spaces or actually even if it's just a text that you want to search for, you still got to put quotes around it and be able to know what you're searching for there. So I can hit enter and now I've got six juniors that are listed on that document as well. Now if we were to go change it, one of our students, yes I know we're small, say Alex has actually failed and he's no longer a senior, he's now a junior. He doesn't get the graduate. Now we have seven instead of our other. Now how did I mess that up? Oh, notice whenever I change that from being a senior to a junior, how my juniors was now is now listed up at the top. Reason being because I'm pulling that unique and it's pulling the first one. So I messed myself up there. Let's go to undo. There we go. Now my seniors back up at there at the top. Okay. Now when we're counting, we can do several different things. We can type it in if it's an exact match. We can count it if it matches a cell. We can also tell it if it has a word in it or has a wild cards. So we can tell it count if, and I want you to search, and if it has the word man in it. Well, freshman is the only one that has the word man in it, so it's going to search for all of those that are freshmen. Okay? So i got a star, man, star. Anything in front of it, I don't care what it is, as long as it has the word man in it, and a star afterwards to tell it anything afterwards. Anywhere that you find the word man, I want you to count. Now, in order to be able to make this, for this scenario, count all of them, or maybe I want to know all of the ones that have an N in it, anywhere that you count have an N, I want you to count those. So seniors, freshmen, and juniors is going to count. Sophomore doesn't have an N in the name. And I hit enter and I got 26. So you can put it down to an individual character or you can make a string of word, a man, a word. Now I'm going to take out the N and I'm going to put a space because I know all of them have a space and I see that there's 33. Okay. Could you do... Like, say you um, had a spreadsheet with um, test scores on it, could you do the ones like greater than 35? You can. So, we're in luck with this because we actually have numbers in it. We're going to try that. So, we can do count all of them that are greater than the number one. Oh, darn, I was hoping it would work. Yeah, it's, if it was numbers, that would have worked for us. So if I wanted to actually count these over here that were greater, so if I do a formula here, equals count if B3 to B9 
is greater than six. Ah, oh, come on, really? It will work. Ah. Quotation mark be between two words. So greater than six or you want to come. Come. You got to come. Let me reconnect here. Uh, you see it's on the scene. Uh, oh. Did my internet go down? All right, we'll let this come back up. Don't y'all love a live demonstration? Everything goes wrong. Did y'all drop off the wireless? Let me get back connected here. There we go. All right. So if I was... So I evidently don't know this one off the top of my head, so we're going to go over here and we're going to search for it. I'm going to go get my more functions. And I'm going to tell it count if, because I know that's the one that we're trying to do. And we get our examples here. Oh, I got to have quotes greater than 20. You know, it always never fails, you know. If it's greater than six, I want you to count those. I hit enter, and now I got three of them that are above it. Now, if you actually wanted the numbers, you could do it count and being able to tell it to count those values if they're greater than six. Okay. So we also, um, we have our asterisk in there. You don't have to actually put a man. You can put multiple things inside of there, being able to add those things up. Now we also, over here underneath our gender, I'm pulling again our unique, and we want to know females versus males in our classes. Well, we have our count unique. I want you to count the number of unique items that are inside of our, our column. So here, we're doing another count. I like to count things and add things up. So we're counting the unique class data B2 to B. How many were in there that were unique? Now, anybody know why I told it B2 instead of B? You didn't want to get the title. You got it. I didn't want to get the header there because that would have gave me another unique item that wasn't really one of my choices. So I told it just the class data B2 to B. Then I've got to count if the females, if it equals female, and then another one if it count if it is a male. Now, we can also add things up, as you guys know. So here, we've got a sum. We want to add up E3 to E6. You guys are used to doing that. You've seen that before. You do that all the time. Now, we've also got a sum if. I only want you to add it if it equals a certain thing. Now, here, we're telling it, okay, I want you to add if 
D3 to D6 is a one freshman, then I want you to add the column E3 up. Now we can specify this to be another piece of information too. So say we wanted this actually to not be the E column here. We actually wanted this to be, I want you to add it. Um, here it's actually pulling our numbers. If we wanted to say here, I want you to say, uh, da, 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 da. that ain't going to work for us, what I wanted to say. Scratch that. <laughs> what I was going to say was, if we wanted to, we could tell it to go add up or sum them if the data is over here on our class data view but that actually won't work for us. We need it in the same same area to give us those pieces of the puzzle. Okay. Now over here, I've saved a piece over here on our counts and I've told it I wanted another piece here. I've got the word array there. How many of you are familiar with an array formula? Anybody? Somewhat? So let's look at this right here. I've got D5 and I've got these through here. Okay, I'm going to take this one that's on D5. I'm going to delete the formula there. Notice how there's nothing in E6. You guys know that you can always go in a cell, drag it down, and it multiplies does the formula down, drags the formula down the page. Well, what if I wanted to automatically it to do a formula going down the page for me? I don't want to have to go and drag down. Or maybe you're doing these things on a spreadsheet, or excuse me, on a form. As the responses come in, you don't want to go in and drag those down every day. Anybody familiar with array formula then? Array formula says, I want you to take this formula and do it all the way down the page for me. So if I was to actually take this one right here, and I take out the array formula portion, and hit enter, you'll notice that my formula just happens on the first one. Now our formula here is a count if, the data is there, is in the E column of class data, and it matches what's A3 to A. Well. A3 to A is really only going to pull the first one. Okay? An array formula tells it, I want you to go all the way down the page. What I could do is I could take this and drag it down. It gets the next one and the next one and the next one. Okay? But then I'm having to drag down the page to get these options. An array formula tells it to go all the way down the page. So if I was actually in here and I told it array formula, hit enter, it automatically goes down the page and will automatically do the formulas for me all the way down the page because I told it to go all the way to A. Now if I wanted it to stop at A6, I could just put A6 in there. And it would stop at A6 and then Art doesn't have its in there. Sure thing. Now here, I'm going to modify that to say A7 so that I get all of my uniques in there. Now, that's well and good, but Google helps you out in the event that you forget how to type array formula, if you're inside your formula editor and you don't want to type out array formula, you can easily hit Control Shift Enter and it will automatically add array formula at the beginning of your sentence and add the two brackets on the ends for you. And I hit Enter and it automatically does it down the page for me. Okay. Another little piece of advice. We've done several formulas here. Trying to remember what document has what formula on it 
you'll never do it. If, once you get creating a couple of hundred documents or even 10 documents, you won't remember what document has what formula or how to do which formula. One of the things that I do is I create a cheat sheet. And you'll see I've got one called Formula Cheats here. This is one that I reference back to on a regular basis because I can't ever remember all of the formulas that I do. So here I've got just a little formula document that I go in and I drop my formulas on that I use on a regular basis or not necessarily on a regular basis but that I've used. Now you'll see some different formulas here. Let me actually blow that up. So some different ones that you see. A duplicate statement, you, you know you got that you want to find all the duplicates that you have on your document. So you can sort, arrange, a, sort, you know, your B column or whatever. If you drop this in and, or excuse me, sort your A column and then drop this in on the B column and drag it down your page, it'll put the word duplicate anywhere that you got duplicates in there. That way you can find all your duplicates, spot, spot checking and find them all. Combinations. How many of you are from, familiar with concatenate? Anybody? So I've got first name and I've got last name in two separate cells. And I want to join it together in the C cell. So I got John Smith in the first cell. So let's, let's go do this. So in L, I got John. In M, I got Smith, Mary, and Joe, Smo, so on and so forth. Well, in the end column, I need to have those concatenated together. I could easily type out concatenate. You got equals concatenate. You also got concat. That will take these, and I could say that one and that one. And you see it tells you what it's going to give you. Okay? Well, that's great. That's fine. That concatenates those two cells to give me John Smith. But what I really want is I want a space in between them because I'm going to get their first name and their last name. So what I like to do is I'll say equals L2 or L1. I'll put the and symbol. And symbol will do concatenate as well. It's your concatenate. And then I put in my quote, space, quote, and I want M1. And you see it tells me it's going to put John Space Smith. That way I get their first and last name in the same cell. And again, I could drag those down if I wanted to. And it gives me all of those. So then if it's actually Mary Alice instead of Ann, I've got that and I can change it at any time. The Ann symbol will be a concatenate for you to be able to do those different pieces. Okay. Could you show that Sure thing. So I've got, and then I put a space in between them. Yeah, to, to, yeah. Or if you wanted to put a dash, you could, whatever the case may be. So if I put a dash, you got it. So yeah, if I wanted to, I could put M1 comma, or oh, excuse me, and comma, space, and L1. Okay? Now let me show you guys something. Okay? The one that's world famous is you get a spreadsheet you get a spreadsheet that already has them just like this. First space, last name in a cell. You've got to split those out. Well, what we can do is an equals split. This will split based upon a character. And I can say in one comma, based upon if it has a space, I want you to split it. 
And then what it will do is it will put the, the information in O1 and P1. So if I hit enter, it puts it in there. Drag that down the page. And then it will separate them back out for me. Okay? Are you in a school or central office principal? I float around the meeting schools. Okay. Um, so, you know, a lot of data managers, your power school coordinators, they get data dumps or whatever. They love this formula. They love the split formula because they get it with that comma in it and they need to separate it out or it has a space, they need to separate the data out, whatever the case may be, you can do so with that formula. Okay? Now, you can make these formulas, and y'all have to stop now, 1040. Okay, we're good. Uh, these formulas, as you start adding on and doing things, they, they get more complex, okay? Here, this, this array formula, this is one I actually used with a district um, to being able to do multiple VLOOKUPs. Okay, if it doesn't equal this, then I want you to wait and do another VLOOKUP to do a lookup later on, things along those lines. They can be real short, or they can get long and complex to being able to do your different lookups. So how many of you are familiar? with a VLOOKUP, and this will fix in just a second. It's something with these projectors in their rooms that get me. Um, a VLOOKUP will go and look up data in a table somewhere. So I need to know, I want you to go and look up, based upon this piece of information, I want you to pull me data back. So here, we're telling it a VLOOKUP I want you to take the E column. What's in the E column? I want you to look for it in the names to emails, and it says in the D column. I want you to find what's in the E, in D, and whatever you find in D, I want you to bring back E. So, how does that really work? Well, I want to know who's got what is their... Um, They're major, okay? So we're actually, I'm going to copy this, and we're going to do a VLOOKUP real fast, okay? Here, <clears throat> I'm going to tell it I want my uniques for my class data. My student name should be unique. So equals unique, my class data. Now here, I'm going to tell it equals I'm going to paste that VLOOKUP. Now, I want you to look up what's in the R column. We really don't need these dollar signs. John, we're presenting next session. No problem. That's fine. I just thought I was boring, you know. No, no, you're great. Uh, it's being recorded, and it'll be posted up on the other session, so if you guys want to get it and watch it, you'll be, have it. Thank you. All right, so we want to do a VLOOKUP for what's in the R and I actually want you to go look it up on class data. Okay. Now, I want you to look for it in A to, to E, but I want you to bring me back what's in column two. Now here, I'm gonna change that to R1 to R because I want it to look in those rows. Okay. And again, who remembers how to add the um, array formula to go all the way down the page? Other than typing it in. Huh? No, it's not the and. Huh? Control shift enter. And it adds the array formula, formula in there. And then I can just hit enter. I'm going to modify one thing here. I'm going to tell it to go A1, though. Okay, that way it'll pull the, the formula header. I hit enter, and it pulls the gender, and it gives me what's in column two, or column two of that span. If I look at the span, I gave it A to E. So if I go back over to filter, nope, not filter, counting. You'll see that I've told it 
take what's in the R column, find it in the class data, and give me back column two. I can actually tell it instead of column two, give me what's in column three. So then I find out whether they're a senior or whatever. You can actually tell it to give you back multiple columns. So I want to tell it to give me back column three and two and then four. Now, when I do this, it's going to put them in those columns that I tell it to give me back the data. So I want it to pull three, then two, then four. Enter. And then it gives me those pieces of the puzzle. So I'm not having to do the formula in multiple columns. That's very important because when you start doing a whole bunch at once, you, you can only do 50 array formulas on a single document. So you want to pull those in in sections if you can. No, excuse me, they lifted that limit. Um, but still, you still want to have it pull all of them at one time if you can. Okay? Questions so far? You guys are a quiet group. All right. So filters. I love filters. Okay? Now, I use filters on a regular basis. Uh, there's no filters in that one. Uh, here it is. So here we're telling it to pull in our student names. From A1 to F1, I'm telling it to pull in all data. Okay? Here, I'm just pulling in all the data across the board for me. Okay? Over to F1. Now, here I've got a little drop down that tells me which class would you like to filter. You could choose whether you want to see all the freshmen, all the sophomores, all the juniors, whatever the case may be. I can pull up my seniors. Here I've got a data validation. If you're familiar with spreadsheets, we've told it to do a data validation from the class data, C1 to C33. So if I look over here at class data, C is the freshmen, seniors, and everything like that. Now, I have a filter formula here that says, okay, I want you to pull the information based upon a filter of info that I give you. So I'm telling it filter class data A$2 to F. You don't really need the dollar sign in there. Google's smart enough to sense it. Excel's not. So in there, A2 to F, I want you to pull anything if it's in the C2 to C area and it equals what I have in C1 on this page. So if it equals a senior, it's going to give me that information. Now this is great if you have multiple submissions by a single student and you want to bring up just their date. Or you're doing my favorite, when was the War of 1812? And you want to know how many of your students chose 1812 as their answer. You could filter it out 1812 and have a listing of all those students that got it correct. Or maybe you wanted to pull up all the ones that said 1712 because we need to work with those students on the dates. You can pull that in and options. Now here, if I wanted to, I could say equals and I could say four dot senior as well if I wanted to pull a filter in for those. Or freshman and it brings in all my freshmen. You don't have to have it look up against the data validation. You can manually type them in as well if you want to. For me, I like to have these drop down so I can go back and choose whichever option that I want to have. Now here, again, we're doing another one. We're telling it that we want to find the females versus the males in our class to be able to pull up that information as well. Okay. So on my class data tab, there's something that I have to use on a regular basis. I build what's called unique IDs. 
This is where you can, if you have a Google form, you, people are submitting data. Well, then you tie another form into something else and something else, or you've got to generate unique pieces of information for your students. Here, what I do is I'm doing a formula to pull in information and pull different types of things. Now, you'll notice that I've got concatenate in here. I've got a substitute. I've got different types of things in here to pull different pieces. So if you look, I've got an array formula. Left. We haven't talked about left yet. But what left is, is it tells it in cell B2, which is our male and female category, I want you to tell me, I want you to pull, and I want you to give me the first character from the left-hand side, which is a one. So then I'm saying, oh, and I need to substitute in the C, in the C column anywhere that you have a space. I want you to take out the space. So four dot senior, the space is gone out of it. And then I want you to put a hyphen and give me what's in A. Now, if we wanted to, we could take out the senior if we needed to, substitute that, we could substitute whatever the case may be. If we wanted to, where we took out the spaces, I could put an underscore, and then it automatically puts four dot underscore senior whatever the case may be that we want to do. Or I could put a dot in there for anywhere that you have the dot space, put an underscore. We could substitute those different types of pieces of information. So then I have a unique ID that doesn't have any types of spaces or anything along those lines and I could take and utilize. Okay. Questions. What are some formulas that you guys have done? Anybody done any complex formulas? Huh? <laughs> so I've got another thing called Purdue View. I call it Purdue View. You got form data that comes in. You collect a Google form, and then you need to be able to view it in a legible fashion. Rather than viewing it straight across, you want to be able to view it more in a form or a document that you can print, put in a file or something along those lines. I call it Purdy View. So basically what we do is we go in. Uh, let me go fix my... My Purdy View basically says, I want to be able to print these things out for each of the students to put inside of a folder form. So I built that unique ID, okay? And then I've told another data validation. I've got a network validation. And then here, I've just gone in, I've put what the titles are, and then I've got another filter to be able to build the data in a form that I can actually legibly read rather than scrolling all the way across. Now, I've got ones that Human Resources uses, documents that Human Resources uses to where they print this out and they put it in personnel files, whatever the case may be, different types of things. So here we can go in, I need to actually not have Alex, I wanna have this freshman, Andrew. And I've got a just a little color field here that whatever ends up in that color in that field, it changes colors based upon what they are. You know, our seniors are about ready to graduate, so we turn them red. Uh, we've also got our juniors; they turn a teal or light green, whatever the case. And it, this is all the same f formula; it's just modified to pull that different cell that we need. Now. You'll notice class data A to A, we're telling it to search the A column. Okay, excuse me. We're actually telling it to search the G column, and we're telling it to match the C column.
But we want you to bring me back what's in the A column. I want you to filter what's in the A column, but I want you to compare the G column to what's in C1 right over there. So it's going to bring me back what's in the A column. So then if I go over here to the gender, that should be the B column. The major should be the C E column. That's where the major's at. Their extracurricular activity. C is where the class level is. And then their state, home state, is in the D. Okay. Our ideas flowing, thinking how you can use these formulas, or is it just way overwhelming? Boy, y'all, I'm not used to quiet people, okay? There's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. There's a lot that it can do, and we are just scraping the surface, okay? How did you get it? I noticed that now. Going back a little bit, you had it combine two names, and then you had it add text. Okay. How did you... All right. So if we go back over here to the filter, nope, mm -hmm. counting. And where do we have? Oh, here it was. So our formula here was I want you to take what's in L1 and I want you to put a space between them. So I put quote, space, quote, and I want M1. Now, if we wanted to say, you know, we could put text in here. So we could say, John, the man, Smith, and that show up in there as well. So you can put text inside of that area to have that show up. Put it on the end also. You can. You can put it on the end. As long as you put quotes around it. Okay. Well, guys, I am out of time. I appreciate you all coming. Like I said, again, all of this is posted, will be posted up online during lunch. My contact information, if you want to reach out, is up on the board as well.